Welcome to our communion service here at St James's. All the words that you will need during the service will come on the bottom of the screen. You may like to get some bread and wine so that you can share with others when we get to the communion. So let's have a moment of quiet as we begin. The Lord be with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed. Through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us, all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson this morning is from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 1 and reading from verse 2 to verse 5 and then verse 24 to the end. On the fifth of the month, it was the fifth year in the exile of King Jehoahim, the word of the Lord came to Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzi, by Kibar, river in the land of Babylonians. There the hand of the Lord was upon him. I looked, and I saw a windstorm coming out of the north, an immense cloud with flashing lightning and surrounded by brilliant light. The centre of the fire was like glowing metal, and in the fire was what looked like four living creatures. When the creatures moved, I heard the sound of their wings, like the roar of rushing waters, like the voice of the Almighty, like the tumult of an army. When they stood still, they lowered their wings. Then there came a voice from above, the expanse over their heads as they stood with lowered wings. Above the expanse over their heads was what looked like a throne of sapphire, and higher above, on the throne, was there a figure of what looked like a man. I saw that from what appeared to be his waist up, he looked like glowing metal, 
as if full of fire and that from there down he looked like fire. The brilliant light surrounded him. Like the appearance of a rainbow in the clouds on a rainy day, so was the radiance around him. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of God. When I saw it, I fell face down and I heard the voice of one speaking. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So today's gospel is from the Gospel according to St Matthew, chapter 17, and reading from verse 22 to verse 27. Hear the gospel according to St Matthew. Glory to Christ our Saviour. When they came together in Galilee, Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the hands of men. They will kill him, and on the third day he will be raised to life. And the disciples were filled with grief. The Temple Tax After Jesus and his disciples arrived in Capernaum, the collectors of the two drachma tax came to Peter and asked, does your teacher pay the temple tax? Yes, he does, he replied. When Peter came into the house, Jesus was the first to speak. What do you think, Simon? He asked. From whom do the kings of earth collect duty and taxes? From their own sons or from others? From others, Peter answered. Then the sons are exempt, Jesus said to him. But so that we may not offend them, go to the lake and throw out your line. Take the first fish you catch, open its mouth, and you will find a four drachma coin. Take it and give it to them for my tax and yours. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. I'm Peter and I'm one of the licensed lay ministers here at St James's and I pray that as I'm speaking today we won't hear me but we'll hear God's voice speaking to each one of us in Jesus name. Amen. I was looking over our reading from Matthew chapter 17 which is set for the lectionary today and sometimes it's interesting how the readings in the lectionary are divided up and today's is a case in point. At first, there seems no logic, but dig a little deeper and the hidden reasoning has a message of its own. The first two verses of today's reading really seemed to have been detached and, and sort of floated away from the rest of the reading. And then there's a break, and then we go into a new passage, which has the heading, the temple tax, and it's an entire self-contained story. And it has at the end of it a little known miracle, one that I'm afraid I had sort of escaped uh, in the past. I must have read it in the past, but I couldn't remember it. In the first separate couple of verses, Jesus is actually proclaiming his own claim to be God. He calls himself the Son of Man and he declares his future triumph over death. He is telling us all that he is God. And in the second part of the reading, he's challenged as to whether he is going to pay the temple tax to drachma that was customs in those days. It's agreed that he does pay the tax. And then there's rather an unusual and a little reported miracle where the coins are taken from the mouth of a fish. But if you dig a little deeper, you'll read that the sons of the temple in those days don't actually pay tax. They're not required to because they're part of the system, part of the setup. Anyone connected with the religious life of the community, anyone who was connected to the temple, wasn't required to pay. 
It was the ancient law or the ancient tradition. And Jesus is just after declaring his ultimate religious connections, his religious standing, his claim to be part of the temple setup, his claim to be God and the ultimate child of the temple. And it would be obvious for him to be able to stand on his rights and make a fuss about being part of the temple setup and not needing to pay the tax. But Jesus doesn't do that. In line with that much more well-known passage in Philippians, the one that we sometimes say together as part of the morning service, he humbly pays the tax without comment. Here's the passage from Philippians. Who, being in the very nature of God, didn't consider equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even to death on the cross. Jesus showed his humility in this passage. He humbly paid the temple tax without comment. That is Jesus' humility. And just before the passage in Philippians, Paul, who's writing, has these words. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. And how often do we, as people trying to follow Jesus, fall into the trap of standing on our rights and our expectations, what we think we deserve or what we think is due to us? It might be something as simple as feeling that we have our right to be unchallenged as we walk down the high street, rather than be challenged by the big issue seller or someone else in need. Of course, we have the right to a calm, uninterrupted walk. But humility will listen to and consider the needs of others. Or it might be that we feel we have the right as the older generation, to be heard. We're older and we have a wealth of experience in life, of its issues and its problems. Of course, we have the right, but humility will also listen to those of every generation. It will listen to the voice around us and consider their needs, their thoughts and their hopes. Or it might be something much more challenging to our own personal lives. Maybe after a long working life, after years of service, after countless changes, you feel, sometimes like I do, that you've earned the right to a peaceful, relaxed time with things the way you want them and no changes. Of course, you do have the right to that. We all have. But Jesus' humble way would be to accept that he still talks to us. He still expects us to follow him through challenges and changes. He still has the call on our time and our money. Maybe even re redirecting how we spend either in his service. We have the right to expect things to stay as they are. But humility is to accept his challenge at any stage of our life. So as we look at this passage from Matthew, with its quirky miracle, let's not get sidetracked, but let's see the humility of Jesus, the same humility that he wants us to show, and ask him in our lives to help us to do just that. Amen. So let us bring our prayers to God. We pray for the church and for the world, and we bring the needs of the whole world to our Heavenly Father, who we are reminded listens to and hears those who cry to him. And so we pray for the world. We pray for Beirut and the Lebanon, in the aftermath of the terrible explosion there last week 
and those dealing with the bereaved, the hurt, the homeless and the suffering, and that amongst the political and economic difficulties that that country is already facing. And we pray for the whole world and each of its nations as we continue to deal with the pandemic. We pray that you will guide and inspire those who seek solutions. We pray that you'll give wisdom to those who lead each nation. And we pray that you'll give grace to us all to think of and care for the needs of one another. And we pray for those, fam those countries where there are famines, war, and political difficulties that make safety, health, and the happiness of the people insecure. Please God, strengthen the needy, support the weak, and give energy and guidance to those who strive for peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our own country, and particularly we pray for those who lead us. Give them wisdom, empathy, and insight for the way ahead through this pandemic and also through the political changes that lie ahead as we work out the, the way that Brexit should finalise. And we pray for those areas of the country that are experiencing new lockdown and the difficulties that that brings. Please keep them and all that it affects safe and strong in hope and endurance. And we pray for those whose jobs are threatened as we move away from the support that the government has been giving us and to those who've already lost their jobs or who feel insecure or threatened. Please support and strengthen them at this difficult time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our own church, those who are beginning to meet in small groups in the actual building and those who continue to connect online. Please give us a sense of community. Please speak through the difficulties that we may know you and make you known. And we pray for our church leadership nationally, in the diocese and here at St James's. Speak clearly to each leader as they begin to find the new normal and the way ahead. Please give them insight, strength and wisdom. We pray for our schools as they begin to plan for the way back in September. Please calm those who worry. Please keep all safe and lead and strengthen those who seek to serve you in our schools, particularly the teachers in our congregation and our own church school of St. James. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who grieve and for the sick and the suffering, and particularly in this silence, any known to us personally. Please bring them comfort and peace and the special knowledge of you close to them. Lord, in your mercy, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, 
of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and on the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through his prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his command grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of your Son Jesus Christ our Lord who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of you. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection, his glorious ascension, and we look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. So as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. 
Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this day and always. Amen.